Welcome to this segment of the Black Madonna Speaks with me, your host, Stephanie Georgieff. I'm also author of the Black Madonna Mysterious Soul Companion and the leader for the upcoming Camino Pilgrimage, The Journey of the Soul with the Black Madonna, which will take place in the summer of 2019. Please see the links below for more information on both the book and the tour. In this segment, I will be exploring Our Lady of the Good Death. At the time of this taping, we are in the beginnings of November. As a person who grew up in Southern California, November was always somewhat of a disappointment to me. I was so jealous of the crisp, cool air and vibrant colors of autumn that those in more Northern climates enjoyed. And I could only witness these on the Hallmark Channel and in magazines. Also, the over-commercialization of secular Christmas always seemed to overshadow the festivities of November. In the liturgical year, the end of October and beginning of November is seen as all hallowtide, or a festival of, for lack of a better word, death. In the Christian tradition, this festival is the observance of death and of all those who have died, both famous and ordinary. Rudolf Steiner, a philosopher from the 19th century, informs us that the great mystery to be faced and transformed during the era of the incarnation was that of death. With the raising of Lazarus, as well as the resurrection, humanity was given great examples that physical death of the body was not the end of life, but simply a transition into a different life. This era, the era of the mystery of death, lasted to the early 15th century. The mystery we are now facing in our current era is that of evil. At All Hallowed's Tide, we have Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, on the 31st of October, All Saints' Day on the 1st of November, and All Souls' Day on the 2nd of November. In lay person's term, All Saints' Day is for the big Jesus of Christianity, the saints and martyrs. All Souls' Day is a day for remembering us civilians. In some traditions, All Souls is a, also an opportunity to pray for those who are in line for salvation, such as those who are in limbo or in purgatory. This slide is uh, one of the panels of some absolutely beautiful modern tapestry in the Los Angeles Cathedral, and it's called the Communion of the Saints. Now, if one looks at this time of year in terms of syncretism and the overlapping and appropriating of customs and festivals throughout time, another interesting leitmotif can be explored. In many ancient mythical and mystical traditions that predate Christianity, we have the theme of an earth goddess who oversees earthly fertility in nature. This goddess has a daughter with whom she is greatly delighted, and the daughter, for many reasons, has to go away for a significant period of time each year, plunging the earth goddess into a state of grief and distracting her from her duties to make the earth produce things like fruits and flowers. When the daughter is restored, then nature also is renewed and brings forth her bounty. We see this cycle in the Natura and Demeter Persephone myths. We also notice a variation on the theme in the Druidic and Western European pagan customs that predate Rome. There are festivals of Samhain and Beltane. Samhain is when the horned god of winter comes into predominance, and Beltane is when the goddess of the flowers comes forth. Samhain is also seen as a time to remember the dead. At the magnificent cathedral of Chartres in France, where there are several famous Black Madonnas, the wellspring on which the church was built, and we can see that on the slide on the left, has been associated with a dark goddess since the dawn of time. 
The cathedral was home to a Templar mystery school where the mysteries of nature, darkness, and light, and other mysteries were studied and practiced. The original Black Madonna statue and a copy of this you can see on the right of the screen was placed in the crypt during the autumn and winter <clears throat> and was brought up into the light, so to speak, on May 1st with quite a, quite a bit of fanfare. The statue was uh, paraded around town and placed in the main cathedral until October 31st when again there was another procession through the town with great fanfare and the image was put into the crypt for the winter sojourn and she had her own altar down there as well it wasn't like they put her in a closet they did still venerate the statue as you've heard me say time and time again there are many interesting similarities between the black madonnas throughout europe some of these similarities that are obviously the color is dark and black. They were brought to the European continent by the Knights Templar and they were placed along the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, an ancient path of initiation. And for those of you who don't know, actually Chartres is on the Camino de Santiago de Compostela. It's quite a, an elaborate network of routes throughout Europe. It's almost like a net that's cast over. But Chartres Cathedral and many other major cathedrals that house Black Madonnas are actually on this route throughout France as well as Spain. A significant factor in the missions of the Templars was their three secrets. The Templars had three secrets that they basically worked with and uh, studied and technically were initiated. <clears throat> One of these six secrets that we learn about is about darkness and light. You've also heard me talk about how the Templars, while stationed in Jerusalem, were deeply influenced by many mystical streams, a joining of East and West, if you will, with some of the most ancient of monastic orders of Christianity and other religious and scholarly sects of the day. Some of the communities that the Templars interacted with when they were in Jerusalem were the Dionysian monks, and these were the monks that followed the tradition of Dionysius the Eripagate, and he was actually one of the very first converts of the Apostle Paul. And something that's very interesting about Dionysius the Eripagate was that he wrote a whole treatise on divine darkness. So I think that's, that's very interesting that the Templars were associated with monks that followed this tradition. Uh, the other groups that the Templars interacted with were those that were affiliated with mystical Sufism. Uh, this was a mystical sect of Islam. And we can see this influence of this interaction with the influence that the Templars brought back to Europe in terms of Gothic architecture. So you can see uh, very interesting similarities of dealing with sacred geometry that the, the Arabs and the Sufis dealt with influencing European architecture during the time of the Templars. We also know that they interacted with groups that were influenced by mystical traditions of the East, which may very well have been the Manichaeism stream in nature. We need to keep in mind that in terms of the evolution of Christianity, Europe was actually quite late to the game. And Christianity, specifically mystical Christianity, had been quite widespread throughout Asia Minor, Asia, and Africa in the first six or seven centuries after the incarnation of Christ. The Templars were great scholars of their era and were in contact with other influential scholars and theologians of the day. 
For me, something that illustrates Templar greatness in terms of their scholarship and their pursuit of knowledge is that they were keenly aware of their ignorance. They knew what they did not know, and they were deeply inspired to seek out knowledge wherever they could find it. And this pursuit of knowledge, in my opinion, and the opinion of many scholars, led them to a lot of travel and took them all the way down into the African continent in terms of seeking knowledge. What most of we moderns encounter when it comes to institutional Christianity is extremely materialistic. And by the word materialistic, what I mean is it is a philosophy that only what we can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell is real. And anything that is unseen or unheard is not real. And we know, those of us who believe in the spiritual world, that there is more than what meets the eyes. So what I'm saying with this concept is that institutional Christianity is extremely materialistic. And if you doubt me, just read up on some sort of modern biblical scholars and different, different streams that are in academia, and they very much focus on just material ideas. Now, this is not to detract from the great social justice deeds of the modern church or the community aspect. Many beautiful things come out of the materialistic and what I would call the exoteric church. But to say that what we are experiencing and being exposed to in terms of universal truths through materialistic religion, that this is a dim mirror of what is real is an understatement of epic proportions. Lim materialistic Christianity has been limited to an individual man when in actuality, it is Christianity is cosmic in nature. Christ himself said as much that he and his message were simply a prelude to a broader cosmic transformation of the universe. And it is cosmic Christianity that the Templars were trying to convey in the midst of a cultural and religious spiral into materialism during their era. The Templars knew what was coming, as did the great Christian initiates of the day, and they did their best together to prepare for the onslaught that they knew was about to come. An interesting theme of the, many of the Black Madonnas is that they are related somehow to death. We see this in the Black Madonna on your left that's from the shrine at Mont Saint-Michel on the Normandy coast, coast in France. And on the right, uh, the Black Madonna of clermont Ferriand. Both of these Madonnas, the Madonna of Mont Saint-Michel is called Our Lady of Death or Our Lady of the Tomb. And the Madonna on the right from Clermont Ferriand is called Our Lady of the Good Death. Now, a side note for those of you who will be joining me in person or in spirit online for the pilgrimage next summer, we will be visiting this Black Madonna from Mont Saint Michel. So I hope you can join one way or the other. And again, the links to that are in the description of this uh, segment. <clears throat> the Black Madonna of Clermont Ferriand, to me, has an almost Mona Lisa type quality to her face, a very satisfied smile. To me, she is revealing that wonderful verse we find in Isaiah 45, three, I will give you the treasures of darkness. We can see all sorts of weaving together of different threads through this beautiful tapestry of the Black Madonna. 
their placement in cathedrals and shrines along the Camino, their association with the Knights Templar, <clears throat> the color of their skin, and the mystic traditions that surround them. We see this reflection and this weaving, specifically at Shalta, where there was a Templar mystery school surrounding the themes of natura, birth, death, and holy wisdom. We also see these mysteries reflected in the practice of the Black Madonna of Chartres coming into the sanctuary in spring and going back down to the crypt during autumn. As I've said before, Rudolf Steiner tells us that the Templars had three secrets, one of them being the secret of darkness and light. I'm going to read you a lengthy quote from a lecture he gave on the Templars, and the lecture is dated October 2nd, 1916, and it's entitled The Templars. Quote, for we human beings, as we live on earth, it is only in our physical body that we live a life connected with the earth. The body that is woven of light and sound and life and is within the physical body, this is called the ether body. This ether body partakes not only in the life of earth, but in the life of the cosmos. And when a human soul descends from the spiritual world to en enter existence through birth, then already before the event, forces are directed in the cosmos in a right way for the building up of the ether body, the ether organism of the human being, even as the physical body of man is built up from the physical forces and the physical substances of earth. In the very simplest of man's ideas lives pride and arrogance, and this is especially true in our materialistic age. <clears throat> in this materialistic age, parents actually believe that they place their children into existence all by themselves. Seen spiritually, this is different. Human beings here on earth only provide the opportunity for something spiritual to come down to them. When a human being can do as a part consists solely in this, he can make ready, humans can make ready the place by means of which an ether body that is being prepared for from out of the far spaces of the cosmos may be able to sink down to earth. This ether organism of the human being is just as much as an organized entity as is the physical body. The physical body, from the spiritual visual standpoint, the physical organism is shown through and glowed by the ether organism. The physical organism breathes in air and breathes out air. The ether body breathes in light and uses up the light and changes it into darkness and can then receive into this darkness the sounds of the worlds that live in the harmony of the spheres. This body can receive into it the impulses of life. As we receive physical nourishment, so does the ether being that lives in us breathe light in and out. As we use up the oxygen of the air and make carbonic acid gas, so does the ether body use up light, shooting it through with darkness so that it appears in colors, so that the ether body shows itself to clairvoyant vision in waves of color. And while the ether body prepares the light for darkness and thereby carries on an inner work of breathing, it lives in that it receives this sound of the worlds and changes the sound of the worlds into the life of the worlds. End quote. 
Oh, what a what an amazing quote. <laughs> so let that quote reverberate for a moment. And I invite you to look up this lecture. You can find it on the Rudolf Steiner archive. And I will also leave a link to that article for you. And considering what we just heard about the reality of spiritual birth and spiritual ex existence of a human, it, aside from the physical existence of the human, just consider that when you think of those original medieval pilgrims who went to Shatra, they would enter into the crypt. These pilgrims in the Middle Ages would pray and sing all night long. And at dawn, the pilgrims would sing and proceed into the main sanctuary. The sanctuary of Shatra is a celebration of light and color with stained glass windows that gleam in every color of the rainbow. Through this medieval custom, and knowing that Chartres housed a Christian mystical school host, hosted by the Templars, we can get an inkling of what was behind this beautiful pilgrim ritual. Steiner goes on to say in this lecture on the Templars, Quote, but now what we receive in this way as to our ether body comes down to us from the wide spaces of the cosmos. It comes at certain times from the far spaces of the cosmos. It is today not yet possible to show in all detail how the human ether body draws downward on the paths of light when these paths are guided in a particular manner through the constellation of the stars at the time. For that to be possible, human beings will have to lift themselves to a higher stage of morality. For today, this mystery of the indrawing of the human ether bodies on the paths of light and on the paths of the sound of the harmony of spheres Currently, this mystery, if deeply understood, could be misused by human beings in the most terrible way. You will accordingly understand that this mystery of how ether bodies come to the human beings who are incarnating, of how they come on the paths of light and on the paths of sound from out of the harmony of spheres, this mystery will have to remain a mystery for a long time to come, unquote. Oh, another one needs kind of take a little sip of something before you can go on, but we're going to go on. When we weave together these mysteries about the truth of human existence and recognize the rituals surrounding darkness and light, we come to a deeper understanding of the mystery of life and death. What is so profound about those quotes, and in my opinion, what the Templars and the great initiates of the day were working with, was showing the true and amazing power, the co-creative power that human beings have to co-create the cosmos. Now, in other lectures and in my books and writings, I talk about how the Templars and specifically the great initiates of Chartres during this time, right before, you know, the, the 14th century, <clears throat> they understood that the cosmos was changing from a cosmos of mystery and wisdom into a cosmos of love. And they also understood that humans were going to be helping to co-create this cosmos of love in freedom. Okay, We just need to keep that in mind. And 
during the time of the Black Madonnas, and it actually was the time nearing the end of that era, we're in a different era now, as I said, it began in the early 15th century. But during the time of the Black Madonnas, the great mystery was the mystery of life and death. <clears throat> and we are now currently in an age where the great mystery we must interact with and transform and understand and overcome is the mystery of evil. And this mystery of understanding exactly what it means to be born on this planet, what that means, and, and what that means to die, and the fact that we descend from the farthest reaches of the cosmos, that we must elevate our morality so that we can harness this power in a loving way and moral way. Personally, I think we are on the edge of learning much about this mystery that Steiner is talking about. If only we can purify our hearts and minds and inspire our wills in love and morality <clears throat> in order to meet our cosmic destiny as humans. I think this is one of the great messages of the Black Madonna, particularly those who are called death and good death. The color black, as I have said before, is the color of cosmic will. And we need to purify and work on our wills in deep morality and love to carry out the task before us. And this is a mammoth task particularly in our current era, where the mystery of evil challenges us on every level. The ability, the will, the clear thinking, the discernment, and the deep love that it's going to take in order to face this, in order to overcome it, and to purify our moral being so that we can go forward and co-create a cosmos of love. This is no small task. And it's also so far been quite challenging. The Madonna is an artistic impulse. The Madonna is a symbol of the human soul. The life of the Virgin Mary is a template for humanity's task. The task is to say yes to the Christ and to birth the Christ within, to be a vessel for divinity. The Black Madonna shows us that we need to tune our will in line with the cosmos and bring love and morality into the long endurance we must face in our current age. The mystery message of the era of the Black Madonna was that death is not the end. It is simply a part of a very long life in and out of earthly existence. Humans are, in fact, mirrors as well as containers of the cosmos. Our being comes from the starry world, from the vast reaches of the cosmos. We have veered off the original plan, but we are being lovingly invited onto the path, back onto the path, by these enigmatic, beautiful images of a dark virgin whose name has changed throughout time, but who has always been there for us, celebrating the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. May your all hallows tide be blessed. May the memories of those whom you love who have crossed the threshold May these memories enlighten the dark, long nights we are experiencing on so many levels.
If you would like to witness in person some of these amazing shrines along the Camino, please consider joining me on the journey of the soul with the Black Madonna pilgrimage in the summer of 2019. You can come in person for a week, for a month, however long you want to do that. You can join a retreat. We've got six to choose from. They range in time of two to three to six days. Just choose one, whichever you feel that you can attend. And you can also join in spirit. Uh, we have a spirit walker uh, option for those of you who just want to join and get all the information and recorded talks uh, online. You're certainly welcome to do that. And below the description of this video, I have all the links that you could possibly want in order to join that. Um, also, if you're so moved, please consider being a Patreon for this channel. It's called The Black Madonna Speaks. I would so appreciate anything that you could certainly contribute. I have special patron-only benefits, and I want to let you know that we will be starting a live stream discussion group for patrons in January of 2019, and we'll have a sneak peek uh, on December 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I have chosen that time so people across the globe in different time zones can join in. And after this sneak peek, then the discussion group will be reserved for Patreon supporters and tour signups only. So uh, there's a link also to that in the description. If you would like a copy of my book, uh, know that it's available through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, Audible, and if you have an Espresso book machine in your community, it's uh, available through print on demand through that way. And for those of you who are listening in Europe, as well as Australia and New Zealand, um, my book is also available through Book Depository. So if that's easier for you, it's available through there. I would be so honored if you would follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and make sure to subscribe to this channel. And for those of you who just like to read things, in addition to purchasing my book, you can also subscribe to The Heart of the Black Madonna on Blogspot. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. I hope you enjoyed this segment, and I hope it inspires you to see what truly a cosmic wonder you are. And I will see you next time. Blessings on your journey.